Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the color weave crochet wrap just like you see. This is a one piece unit that you have. The scarf is actually part of it and it's attached to the back collar of this particular wrap that we have. We also have other photos available online. Just click the more information link of this video and you'll see more of that. So what we have here, this is a really fun color play. It's based on color pop or sorry Bernat pop and what's going to happen here is that the colors will transition on its own using two different color balls of Bernat Pop. So let me explain that. Now. So I'm using two different colors of balls. You need six balls of each of the colors. So six of this, six of that. So this is Violet Vision. This is Snow Queen that I have but the pattern requires uh, that it calls for Blue Chambray and Foggy Notion. So you're gonna be using these. So you go back and forth with one ball and then back and forth with the next and keep alternating and you don't uh, trim your yarn. You just carry it up the side nicely. So what's happening on here is if you look at the model you'll notice that the right side and the left side kind of match each other. That's because it's strategic that you started and stopped near to the same spot so that it looks even on each side. If that doesn't matter to you just keep on crocheting as you normally would. You wanna also keep in mind that chain two in this particular pattern on the edges do not count as one stitch. So then when you're uh, doing this it's actually pretty easy to do. So there's also a diagram available to you. Let's take a look at that next. On the final page is a crochet diagram just like you see. So you're gonna start up and you're gonna notice that it's really quite easy to be able to follow. The first time you ever go across on number two you're going to be uh, it's gonna look really strange as you hit to number three but once you get beyond this it gets a lot easier. So if don't uh, get frustrated with it right off the bat. The whole pattern is based on this kind of concept the front and the back uh, panels that you have and that what you have to pay attention to is that the back panel is made up of like almost a rectangle that is 30 inches deep and then once you get to the 30 inches then you're gonna do a, a setup of a neck row so then you can then start doing these uh, left and right panels that you have. It's really quite easy to do. So today I'm gonna get you start off started. You're gonna need a six millimeter size uh, J crochet hook in order to play and again Bernat Pop yarn is our yarn of choice for this particular one. So without further ado let's get yourself started on the back panel first and we're gonna work our, work our way throughout this pattern. To get started on this project I want you to pull the center of your Bernat Pops out and then just get those ready and those will begin your starting strand. So pull one out of each and then you just have to choose which one you're gonna start with first and then you'll be using the other color then for the opposite rows. So pull out your colors now and let's begin to do row number one. So let's create a slip knot and begin. You're gonna chain 146. I'm not gonna do a big sample like that because I've already done the actual real sample that you'll see in a little bit after we get the back panel done and then I'm gonna carry on the real sample to do your front and the backs because that's the only way to do it. So I want you to chain 146 and uh, just continue. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go all the way to 146 for me. Meet me back here in just a moment. So as promised I'm only doing a small piece here just to show you. It's really quite easy. So you're gonna go fourth chain from the hook. So count it back. So one, two, three. Go to the fourth and get the back hump of the chain. And what we're going to do then is that you're going to double crochet in that one and then double crochet in the next one after that. So you appear to have three double crochets on an edge. Both of the edges will appear to have three everything else now in between. You're gonna chain two and then you're gonna skip two and then sing our double crochet in the next two. And that's what you're gonna do all the way across. Just like that. Okay so chain two, skip two and continue to double crochet in the back hump of the chain all the way down. I'll meet you at the end of your chain. Just put me on pause now and then meet me back there in just a moment. So eventually you'll get to the other side. Don't worry about my ending piece here. This is just a small sample I'm showing to you on camera. So you skip two and then you double crochet in the next two and eventually you're gonna hit so that you'll have one chain left. And in that one chain you're gonna simply put another double crochet in. So the beginning of these rows and the ending in this particular one is going to have three double crochets on the ends and then you'll have your chain twos and your two double crochets and your three on the, this side. Let's move up to row number um, two that we have. Sorry, no, <laughs> row number two. Um, you're not gonna change your color yet. Just keep this color going and now let's begin that next. So the instructions as we turn are going to appear complex but they're actually really quite simple. It's because we're jumping between two balls. So what we have is that whenever it starts like this you need to fill it in with some information. So we're gonna chain up two 
and that doesn't count as anything. I promised you that in the beginning. So the first stitch where it comes out of is one half double crochet. So do not confuse that that chain two is anything. It's not, it's nothing. So now what we want to do is chain two, skip over the two double crochets and immediately come into these two stitches that you skipped. Now you're gonna double crochet in those and you're gonna go right up over this chain, not in front, not behind, right over it. So wrap the hook and coming into the skipped chain, the first one. The very first time you do this is really quite awkward but once you get it done um, in the in the rows to come it's easy. So just go, go in there and just go around. See it pulls it down and then just double crochet. Do you see that? So do the next one. So you're filling in all these chain two spaces and going directly to the chain underneath it to be able to fill it in. And I'm making it look more awkward than it is. My, my angle to teach you is not always convenient for my own personal eyes. Okay, so you double crochet those two. Now you're going to skip over the existing two double crochet by chaining two and then come into the next chain work by going up and over. So just going in, so you might wanna push it in and then just go up over top of that chain two. So it's trapped in behind, so there's not front or behind. And you keep doing that all the way across. So what I would do, keep doing that and then meet me back here in just a moment and I'll show you how to finish the other side. So just pause me now. Now for those continuing, you're just gonna chain two and then just come into this last gapping space on the end of your row and continue to fill it in. So one and two. And then you're gonna come to the very edge. So you're gonna chain two and in the uh, first one that you had is gonna be one half double crochet. Go right into a chain work itself. Don't go into a space because it'll open it up. Go right into a chain and half double crochet. Now when you half double crochet, you cannot finish this stitch. So you're gonna have three loops. Now because you're switching balls, create a slip knot first and finish that stitch with the new color and you're gonna pull through. So every rows that you see, you're gonna go back and forth with one color, back and forth with the next. So let's turn our work and let's put the purple be aside and let's start doing this pink as we work our way across in row number three. So let's get started. Now you have a gapping space right off the hop before you didn't. So now we're just gonna chain two, does not count as anything, and half double crochet in the same one where it comes out of. Now we have to fill in this gapping space so we immediately double crochet into this stitch right here. So just going into that stitch and go right up over top of that chain two that you had and double crochet around. Okay, so that should bury everything into position. Now you chain two because you have a two double crochets in the way and now you're gonna come immediately to this one here and you're gonna double crochet into that stitch below going up over top of that chain two. And then chain two and keep on going like that. So do that now and put me on pause and for those wanting to continue just keep me playing and I'm just gonna show you how to finish. So for those continuing, just chain up two and then just double crochet in the remaining ones. What you need to watch for is this the most. This is where I screwed up right in the beginning uh, of my pattern is that it appears that there's two stitches left so I miscalculated. Remember chain two does not count as anything so it appears that there's two but there's only one. And so just come into the final with a half double crochet and you're done. To move up to row number four, keep that color. See the purples will always stay on the one side, the color transition. This side will always be a clean edge. And then turn your work and begin. So chain two to start, half double crochet in the same one. And now, see the two double crochet are in your way so that means you gotta chain two first to skip over it and then come into this space here. So come into these down here. And 
fill those each in with double crochet, chain two to jump and then we continue across. So these rows are really quite easy to, to do. Because there's two different colors being used the instructions have to be longer than they should be and that's only because that's just keeping in the standards of crochet. So that's nothing much to worry about. So you're coming near to the end. You started pink here so you're gonna be finishing off and because this and it could be a different color for transitions on its own midway through but you have this here to prove that that's the end. So you're gonna chain two and come immediately to the final stitch and then half double crochet. So pull through but don't pull through everything and grab the purple and finish that stitch and just carry it up on the side. You're gonna do a border edge anyway. So turn your work and begin the next row. So you already know what you're doing so but I'm gonna carry on anyway. So you're gonna chain two, half double crochet in the same one. So those will always be the same to start. The question is whether there's a space or whether you start immediately um, by skipping over. So in this case there's a space. So these two long ones, remember this here is a half double crochet so you're not counting that, that's an edge. So these two long ones are where you wanna focus. So you're just gonna go right into those, just double crochet and then carry on. So then chain two to jump. You gotta jump over this one, solid one and immediately double crochet in the other one. So what I want you to do is that I want you to go back and forth now till you get to the 30 inches tall. So from this edge all the way to the top edge and that will be your back panel. Do not fasten off at the end because we need to do a preparation row to begin to do the front panel. So that will be happening on the back panel as well. And I, when I come back then I will have that done. I've actually done that off camera already to start today's tutorial. And so when I come back I'm gonna show you how to get started on the back. So you just keep on going and then just half double crochet in the end. And then turn your work and come back. So it's really neat. So I'm gonna show you my sample that I've done now and then I want you to go all the way to 30 inches tall and meet me back here in just a moment. So here's my sample. I've done 30 inches tall and you need to finish off on the third row. So the ending one will have two half uh, double crochets on the end here and then one half double crochet on the end. That's how it'll appear at the end. That's when you know you're on your last row three. So you're just gonna keep on going till you get your 30 inches and now from this point now we're gonna get ourselves set up for doing the back final row of this. We're not gonna fasten off and then we're just gonna carry on and then do the panels. So the panels are attached immediately to the using double crochet and this technique and then going up and over and on the other side it'll be the same way up and over. So carry on to 30 inches and then meet me back here and I may see you in a couple days from this point but uh, at this point that's what you need to do. So let's set up the final row uh, before it transitions to the front and the back or the front panels. Here's what I would do if I were you. You got a lot of counting to do as per the instructions. It's a massive instruction but it's actually really quite simple. What I want you to do is, this is where we stopped. I want you to count a total of 15 of these gapping spaces. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. And on the 15th one just after it just put a stitch marker. Then I want you to count a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 gapping spaces and then put a stitch marker after it. Then the remaining that you have is the other side and there will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15 uh, gaps and spaces again way over here. So what I want you to do is I mark that it's just a lot easier instead of having to count because what we have to do right here in the neckline is that we have to do something different here. And so let's get ourselves started and uh, I'm going to be transitioning to my purple next as I move into this row and once we get to this area here. So if you wanna follow those instructions you can but what I would do on the video here just mark these. It's just I'm, I'm gonna do it that way because it's just too hard to be able to count with you and just be able to show you. So just mark your stitches now and then let's get started on this. If for example something happened to you and you didn't have the right amount of these spaces don't worry about it just fake it because then the, the front panels are really quite easy to do. So just keep that in balance and let's get st ourselves started and uh, I have to finish this one here with the purple color and then begin to do the first uh, setup row then for the back. So we're gonna go all the way across but we just have to do something special 
right in the very uh, right in the very uh, middle of it. So let's transition back to purple and then let's get ourselves started. So we're gonna start up with our same one that we have. So we're gonna just chain two and we already know how to do this. You're half double crocheting the first one and then chain two and then skip to the next ones that you have right here. So you're just gonna maintain the pattern until you hit to that stitch marker that is over here. Okay, so just continue to go along. So chain two, skip two and then go into the ones below and then continue to do that to you hit to that stitch marker and then meet me back there in just a moment. So you're coming up to the stitch marker. So now what you're going to do is chain two and just jump right over that and just put in two double crochets in the, the stitch after that what you normally have done. Now here's what's different is that these two double crochets you're not skipping over top you're just putting them as half double crochets. So you put one into each and then just jump back down here and then just fill it in. This is how you normally fill in the end when you're at the end of a panel and what we're doing is we're doing in the back of the neck so you don't end up with a gapping space. So make sure you don't chain after each one of the sections. So you're half double crocheting in the tops of the double crochets and then you're double crocheting into the spacing. So you're gonna continue that until you hit to that other stitch marker that's coming up. Okay, so you continue that. And just uh, hang on one second please. So jump back down into the double crochet and then jump back up for the, this is the last time for the half double crochet for this moment. And then this is the space right before this stitch marker. So finish that off with a regular double crochet in and then begin to chain two once again. So chain two and then jump over and then just finish off the remaining of this row in the same fashion that you already know you're putting in your chain two spaces after each section for one, two and then jumping. So this is the setup row for the back of the shoulders and so you can see here then it is looking pretty awesome and then you can come back and do this. So finish up to this row and then meet me back here and then we're gonna start the right hand side and then we're gonna get ourselves started and when we do the, the panels then we stop close to where these stitch markers are already there. So I've done you a favor by having you mark where the stitches are. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. So we're now at the end of the line so we're going to turn our work. Now this blue here, this was finished on the other side of way over here. So you're gonna have to break that because when we go to stop at the neckline here, approximately where the stitch marker is, there's two of them. Remember we're gonna stop at the first one this time is that you're going to want to start up the blue again then finish off that ball. You wanna keep a mental note now from this particular point you kinda want the colors in the front of the, of the wrap to match. So you just wanna keep a mental note where you are for color wise. So just uh, do that. So we're gonna turn our work and we're going to begin the first uh, right hand side and we're going to begin to do that now. So we're keeping in line with the pattern as we move to the first row of the right hand side. So chaining two, uh, two doesn't count as anything and half double crochet in the first one and you're going to maintain the pattern as you already know it. So your goal is is to get yourself all the way to close to this stitch marker here. So let's just count the number of spaces. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15 here that you have. So you got 15 here. So you want, want to go right up into here. So just past that stitch marker this is your last stitch right here. Okay and we're gonna do that on both sides. So, so once we uh, get that done it's gonna be awesome. So let's just uh, continue to maintain the pattern until we get there and I will see you there in just a moment. So just double crochet as you normally do right over top to keep this pattern looking the same. So I'm getting close to the first stitch marker where, where is where I want to stop. So I'm just going to go into that last space where the stitch marker is and then I'm just going to half double crochet into the next top one here and that's it. So rows two through four is just a ma matter of maintaining. So this last one here I have to get that next color that's here. Now I cut that from the other side and so now I want to bring that in to the equation. So I'm just gonna leave an extra long tail. 
I can use a darning or a tapestry needle to finish that off later. So I'm just gonna use that color. So rows two through four, so there's gonna be two rows completely, is that you're going to uh, just go back and forth maintaining the pattern. So just turn your work and it's gonna go quicker now because you're doing smaller panels really even though you have two of them to do. So to restart the next row you're just going to chain two and this already has the double crochets in them. So you're just gonna half double crochet the first one and then chain two to jump over those and then just immediately jump down. So you're just gonna go back and forth now for uh, three rows completely. So this is row one of three. So technically on the instructions this is row two. So rows two, three and four just maintain the pattern as you see it. And then we'll be back here in just a moment. Now my rows two through four are now done and I'm on the outside panel so the neckline is where I'm heading to for row number five. It's important that you know that. So what we have is that we're going to continue the pattern as you particularly know it but on the very last one that you have is that you need to put two half double crochets into the final one that you have here at the end. That's all there is to it. So it's kind of a neat idea, right? So what we're going to do, just start up just like you normally would. So chain two, half double crochet in the same one and then just continue the pattern as you know it and then what I want you to do is that I'll meet you at the neckline as we continue into round number five at that point. So as we continue along what's happening here is that we are getting more and more narrow. So what I want you to do is that I want you to turn this upside down and so what's happening here is that we are literally coming from the back side and we are literally turning over, or literally going over the front. So what we're doing is that we're increasing our stitches in the neckline right that you see here. So that's what we're, that's what our plan is then from round, uh, row number five beyond. So let's uh, begin and once we get to the maximum then it's just a straight shot all the way down. So as we come up across we're just gonna continue the pattern right to the last one but we're gonna do something slightly different. We have to change our color as well. In the final uh, stitch normally it's a one half double crochet but this time it'll be two. So put in two there and don't forget to change over your yarn then when you go to do that for that second one. Okay so make sure everything is nice and kind of snug. Now you are doing borders around this so all the stuff that you're carrying on the side um, will look decent because you can hide it underneath that. So let's uh, now turn our work and let's move up to row number six. So continue in to row number six. You're gonna just chain up two and then you are going to half double crochet twice in the first one. That's what you have. And then in the second one you are going to half double crochet once. And now you're going to create your chain and start jumping in the pattern. Just change the color the yarn did. So now I'm just going to maintain the pattern as I know it. Okay so this is increasing so it's going to start jutting out which is what you need. So continue the pattern as you know it all the way back to the other side. The other side still remains flat. It's only the neckline that you'll be having to worry about it. So please continue now and finish row number six. Row six is complete. So this side is the outside of your wrap. So to keep this flat and now turn and let's go back now to do row number seven. So row number seven, chain up two and just start it as you normally did. So it's one half double crochet in the first one and then just continue the pattern. So the very last half double crochet stitch that you have there will be two into that same one and this is just like row number five. So it's just uh, it's getting bigger because it's expanding on the other side in the neckline. So I'll meet you at the end of this row, row number seven. At the end of row number seven you're just putting in two half double crochets. Remember that you have to switch to the next color because you've just gone two colors. For me this is actually take number two. I forgot this blue is actually part of that whole thing it changed. So what we have here is that we're going to turn our work and begin row number eight. Row number eight we have to have a stitch marker available to you. So just a stitch marker or a piece of yarn. You want to chain two and then in the first one here you want to put in one half double crochet and one half double crochet into the next one. So two in a row. So it's not two in the same one it's two in a row. I know you're at the neckline so you want to do that I'm sure. So what it's asking you to do is to place a stitch marker on the first one of this half double crochet. So the first one of the two. I'm not sure why but it'll come clear down in the future. So just put that in there so that you don't 
um, screw this up later. So now you're going to maintain the pattern as you already know it and just simply just come down and just go across and then we're just gonna finish up row number eight together and then we'll continue into row number nine. So I'm coming into the very end and I know why that we just put a stitch marker so that's kind of cool. So you're just gonna maintain right to the end. What I would do if I were you if, and you were me, I'm looking at my other yarn balls and I'm looking for this exact color. I don't see it. So what I'm gonna do is that I still need to keep this color but I'm going to trim this at this particular point and then when I come back to this I'm just going to add in the new yarn. So just pull up a loop. This here yarn I want you to go back to where we marked the actual one. So notice that I just turned it. So this is the one that we marked and that's where we're going to join this yarn. This color will appear over top of this purple so we want to make sure that it matches. We're gonna create a long tail uh, slip knot and right where you have the stitch marker just attach it with a slip stitch. You were going to use this chain to build out. Remember what I showed you that indentation that came out in front of the diagram? This is what we're doing. So we're gonna chain a total of nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And once you have your ninth there, I want you to just to trim this yarn. Do not pull on it really crazy. I want you to just keep it so that it makes sense. So I'm just gonna pull through the final and just kind of just give it a good, I'm just, I'm not being over crazy with it. I'm just being snug. So now I'm going to continue then into row number nine. So I'm going to pick up where I left off and you know that I already trimmed this. So I'm going to, to do a better job, I'm going to just undo this final stitch and go into half double crochet and I'm gonna grab the yarn from the, the yarn ball, new yarn. We just have to use a tapestry needle at the end to sew in these ends and I'm just going to pull through. So now the new yarn is the one that's attached. So row number nine, what we're going to do is that we are going to get ourselves all the way to that chaining that I just did but it's just a matter of maintaining the pattern. So just chain two, half double crochet in the first because we're on the outside of the, of the wrap and when we get closer to the neckline I'll be back here. Um, because this is the same color I might just bury this underneath the stitches. It helps it also get rid of it and uh, I can use a tapestry needle too to hide it. So maintain the pattern as you know it going close to the neckline and then I will see you there and show you how to finish off that chain beautifully. So I'm coming up near to the end. So I'm just gonna pull out this stitch marker that I had. So what you're seeing here is that it's extending over as part of the chain. So we're going to go to the end of this as you know it. So chain two and then what you need to do is skip over your two as normal. So you're gonna half double crochet in the final two, one and two and then the chain work is next. See how it's the same color? That's what you wanted. So chain two and then skip the two first chains and you want to half double crochet in the next two. And then chain two, skip two and half double crochet in the next two. So you wanna do it a total of twice. Just like that and then what you need to do is that you need to do one half double crochet in the final chain. So technically there's kind of three in the row at the end. So that's how you have it there and so see how it's kind of nice and loose. So now we're gonna turn our work and progress into row number, row number 10 and what we need to do is that this yarn has been carrying up. So what we need to do is that just carry this yarn and we wanna break this yarn here because we have to start the new yarn at the end of this row and not down here. So uh, get rid of this yarn and then we're gonna start a new yarn as we continue then into round number 10. Let's start row number 10. So I want new yarn. So what I have to do is that I have to just create a slip knot and this last one that we did the half double crochet I wanna make sure that I'm using that color to finish it. So just kind of redo it there. Yeah, you know tw uh, hindsight is always 2020. People always tell me that I should do this and I should do that and I should film this, film that. You know hindsight is always 2020. So just finish this with the new color. So now we're gonna officially turn and use the new color then to go back and forth. So row number 10 is just what you know it. So chain up two 
and then it's half double crochet in the first one and the half double crochets are right underneath so you're just gonna automatically skip those so chain two and then just come into the chain just like we had done in the very beginning of our project if you remember that far back at this point and just fill in those chains with some new stitches and create the look that keeps it consistent all the way. The nice thing is that there's only two gaps so it's not like you're doing a whole back panel again and if it was big deal right? What else you got to do in your life? <laughs> I love crochet as you can tell. So we're gonna continue along and just chain two. Now you're back on the main project itself and just maintain it right to the very end of the row and then we're gonna turn then and progress into row number 11. So I'm coming up to the end of the row. I'm just gonna stop it with the half double crochet and turn and let's do row number 11. So we're just gonna maintain, we're just still keeping this color in, in place and all you're just going to do is maintain exactly what you already know. The hard, far, uh, hard part is over uh, as far as doing the right panel just so you know. So you're just gonna maintain exactly what you see and you're gonna go right to the end of the line. So that's all there is to it for row number 11 and then I'll see you at the end of row number 11 here in a moment. So as we come across row number 11, so my friends you're just gonna continue then as you know the pattern just like you did the back, just a straight shot down. Now how far are you gonna go? You're gonna lay your project down and the front of this panel should match the length of the back panel. So if you lay it down properly, have it uh, fold down on the table so that it looks like that uh, you know it looks really awesome so that it's laying on top of the back section so that you can see Exactly. Now remember the back is about 30 inches long so that's kind of like your goal to get down there. Now when you're getting all the way back to the other side here you're just gonna continue then into this chaining space area just like you had been before. And I wouldn't worry about the edging too much. We are going to do a border for this whole thing at the end. So you're gonna have to get there. So what I want you to do now is that I want you to maintain the pattern as you know it. Uh, just continue to change your colors when you need to and in my case I'm about to now and uh, I'm just going to continue then straight shot down and the next part of this tutorial I am going to as I'm <laughs> messing up here on camera I'm going to meet you then we're gonna do the left hand side as we go. Uh, when I come back I'll have the all the loose ends that I've done uh, all woven in at this point so that I can give you a clear indication. So essentially the left hand side if, if I break it down as I'm doing it with you here. Um, the left hand side what's gonna happen is that um, it's basically opposite to what you've just done and the reason for it is that we're gonna start off in the middle uh, neckline area and work our way out towards the edges before when we started it was on the edge working our way to the neckline and we do that to keep the pattern looking consistent so that you don't end up with a line that looks backwards so you continue with the right side and etc. So please uh, get this all the way done now to the bottom and then once you are satisfied with the length of it then you're good to go and then meet me back here and we'll continue the left hand side together. So I'm just finishing up the right side. I actually uh, filming wise this was yesterday that I was starting this one so then today I'm finishing. I'm just attaching. I accidentally uh, fastened off at the end. So I gotta finish off my last row. So you see that the last row here has spaces. We're gonna fill those in. So you're gonna chain two and you're going to half double crochet in the first one as you normally have been. Now the ones that have the double crochet in them you want to put in a half double crochet right on right in those instead. So you're not doing any chaining to skip anything. So you're gonna fill it in nice and solid. The ones that do have the spacing you're going to fill that in with double crochets like you normally did. Okay so the only difference is you're not doing the chaining of two to jump over. So normally you would have chained two at this point but you're not going to. You're just gonna put one half double crochet in each. So just finish off this last row and then when we come back uh, you're just gonna fasten off. I'm gonna weave in all my loose ends at the end. There's uh, a few of those to worry about so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna move on to the left hand panel and then essentially get yourself to the home stretch of finishing your wrap together with you here on camera. So let's begin to do the left front panel. So when we did this before when we did the right we started on the outside and then we worked our way and got ourselves to the neck and then we stopped and then we went back in the other direction. Now to keep the pattern in line with your right side and your wrong side being on the correct side you have to start literally 
continuing along that line and then start here. So you don't start on the end and come back to the neck because then that row will be backwards compared to the row below. So in order to keep it balanced. So right where I had you put the stitch marker we're gonna start in the stitch right before it. Okay, so if you noticed after it, uh, the one on the other side, we started just after this one where we put it in. So you want to take a mental note and you can count the amount of stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you see how they're jetting down? So I wanna keep those in line. I also did a double check to make sure that the spacing is right on the, on the outside here so that you don't end up with one panel that is too big. Now they're also recommending in the photograph you will notice that the model looks similar to the, um, the front looking similar. So what they're asking you to do is just keep an eye on these colors and kind of have them so they look like they're matching across. They're gonna be askew a little bit because it's, it is a, a, a long striping yarn. So what I have purposely done is that I am getting myself set up so that I am starting with the correct colors. So um, this is when we first started. So I'm starting off with the purple and then I'm gonna be transitioning to the blue and the other one and then working my way down and it will pretty much almost align. So without further ado let's head on now into row number one left hand side and let's begin. So left hand side we're gonna start. This is the neck area here and this is where we're gonna go and we're gonna go to the one right before, uh, right before the stitch marker happens. Okay, so I've already done my double checking to make sure that it's gonna match but I would probably double ch check after you get this row done too. So you're just gonna attach your yarn. Make sure you attach all the plies. <laughs> Try this at home. I was gonna say don't try it at home but then I don't have a tutorial do I? So you're gonna chain two. Doesn't count as anything as normal and then you're going to double crochet into the same one. So this is just getting yourself starting so you're in the right spot. So right where the stitch marker is you're just gonna jump down and just fill it in with what you already know. So just follow the pattern then to the end just as you already know it. If this is in the way just get rid of that stitch marker. And if you can work around it, great. It almost, it gives you a sense of uh, measurement for the end. But now that this is the left, I'm going to make sure that it matches this side as far as length. So I'm really not too concerned about that stitch marker anymore. So chain two, jumping over and continuing to maintain the pattern going across and I'll see you at the end of this row. So as you hit the end of row number one of the left hand side, um, just to keep an, a note that you're going to have to make sure that you change the color in the last one because you can see that you got two purples in a row here. So the last one you're gonna do your half double crochet. So there's no color to change to so you have to get your next uh, ball ready and get that done and I'm matching the blue that was already there and I'm just keeping an eye on that just to make sure it kinda matches the other side and just pull that through. So now you're going to turn your work and you're going to do three rows of just regular back and forth. So this is rows two, three, and four. You already know how to do it by this time. So chaining up two, half double crochet in the same one and then just follow the pattern exactly um, as you know it. So chain two and then jumping over and etc. So I want you to do three rows of just regular back and forth changing your color strategically when you, when you need to and I will see you then at the end of row number four. So I'm coming up to the end of row number four and I'm going to half double crochet in the final one here. Now what we need to do is that we need to go back to the chart. So we have our instructions but if you remember on the right hand side that we have to build out. So turn this upside down and so the left side so what we're going to do is that we're gonna grow it out towards the center line and then so going back and forth. So before we were growing out towards the front uh, before this <laughs> to the center line as well and so we're gonna be doing the same thing here in the neck area so we're building up for a bit. So let's continue then into row number five and it's just how you did it before. It's actually pretty easy um, when you break it down step by step. So let's turn our work. I'm continuing the same color here and then we're going to chain two and then in the same one you want to put in two half double crochets to start. So one and two. So two and then just jump down and then begin your pattern as you normally did. So you put two in the, the first one just to start expanding and then you're just gonna work your way across with what you already know and then we'll meet you at the end of this row. So I'm coming up to the end of row number five. So on this is the edge, the side edge where your arms would be. And so you're just maintaining the pattern straight down 
on this side of the pattern. So it's only in the neck you have to worry about. So it's actually pretty easy. So we're just gonna fill this in and then we're just gonna jump and change our yarn at the last half double crochet. So changing it back. Okay. So we're just gonna turn our work and now we're going to begin then row number six. So row number six on the outside edging we are going to just keep it as normal. So you're just gonna chain up two and then just keep on doing what you normally do. So you're just gonna half double crochet in the front or the first one, chain two and then jump to the next. So what I want you to do is that I'll meet you at the neckline and we'll finish off row number six together because you're, it's still an expansion row at that point. So I'll see you at the end of this row, row number six. So then you chain two and then you come to the second last one and you half double crochet so you just created a new space as you see it and then you're going to half double crochet twice in the final one like that. So let's uh, turn our work and let's begin row number seven. So seven we're still gonna expand and then we're just gonna maintain the pattern as we normally do. So we're just going to drive our yarn up here, chain two and you are going to put two half double crochets in the first one. So one and two just like that and then you chain two and then you skip and you start again just like the regular working just coming straight down and then that just creates a new open space for you. So just continue then to go back across this is row number seven and then you're just gonna fill in the space and then you'll change the color on the other side and then we'll start row number eight together. Coming up to the end of row number seven maintaining the pattern and look we have to change our color back at the end. So grabbing your next we'll color back up and let's turn our work. So row number eight is still another expansion round but we don't worry about it until we get to the neckline. So just chaining up two and maintain the pattern and then I'll meet you at the neckline and then we'll continue on. So you're half double crocheting, chain two and then filling in the spaces etc. You already know what you're doing. I'll see you at the neckline now for row number eight. So I'm just coming up to the end of row number eight. We're gonna be doing something unique in number nine but you may remember that from the right hand side. And then chain two and then what you're just gonna do is just jump on over and you are going to place in a half double crochet or in each of the last two. Okay so one and two. So we're gonna keep this color going for this uh, particular instance but we're now going to move to row number nine. So before you be turn the work number nine if you remember that we had to jet out just like you see here on this and so we have to create this but because of where we are we actually just don't fasten off like we did before. What we need to do is just chain a total of, of uh, eleven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and eleven. Now we can turn and head into row number nine together. So because we're on here we're gonna go um, how many third chain from the hook. So one, two, three, go to the third and begin to half double crochet into that one. So I'm just using the back chain. It's just nicer to be able to get it later. So I'm getting that one plus the next two half double crochet. So you're starting to create the established pattern and then you're going to chain two just like that and then what you're going to do is that you're going to skip two on the thing on the chain I was gonna say thing and you're gonna half double crochet the next two. Then chain two again okay and then all of a sudden you are now going to be coming in to this section over here. So just you wanna maintain exactly what you're seeing. Okay so what you're going to do is just half double crochet in. This is the near the end of the chain and do the next one. And then you see you're skipping one and then just chain two and then coming in to this section down here and start maintaining the pattern all the way across. If you're not sure if you're thinking you're not sure and you're doing it right. Okay what you can just do is you can double check. So let me just finish this stitch. So if I'm looking at both sides here 
this should be the same. So I know I'm right. So I'm gonna chain two and now maintain the pattern going across just as you already know it. So please do this. This is row number nine. So I'm coming to the end of row number nine. So we're just coming to the end and we just gotta switch our, st our strand again. And what we're going to do now is just, you've got the width already figured out at this point. You'll remember doing this in the, the right hand side. So you're just gonna turn your work and now you're just gonna do a straight jet on down. So you're just gonna go straight on down the front. Let me just back out the camera here. And what you want to do is that you want to get this one to match the other front panel that is exactly the same length. So just starting up again, chain two, half double crochet into the first one and then chain two and then continue then to maintain the pattern. So you're gonna go right out to where all this is by itself and you're going to maintain it and just go straight on down the project and when we come back then I'll have that completely done. So it's time to turn on the TV, sit back, relax and just go straight on down and make an additional panel that will be on the left hand side that you're doing right now. So we'll, I'll see you in a bit and uh, it'll probably be tomorrow more than likely filming time. So I'll see you again real soon. Bye bye. So here I am at the end of the left hand panel all the way down. I have double checked it with the length and last time I was here, you know my sweater was the same as that it was yesterday. So um, I actually felt uh, I was crocheting this last night. To finish off the final bottom area, you're going to finish it off like you did on the right hand side. So chain two and then just half double crochet in the first one. Just like that. And then in these spaces, you're still gonna, gonna <laughs> you're still going to do your double crochets. But then when you hit the tops, you don't ever chain two anymore. You just simply half double crochet in the tops of the double crochets that are there to keep it nice and balanced. So what I want you to do is that I want you to do that all the way across, fasten off, weave in your ends, and then we're gonna continue in this project. We're gonna take a little bit of a detour, give you some options, and then that's it for now. So let's continue to get this done. I'll see you at the end of this section. So in this part of the tutorial, I now can move on to the border. Here's some options for you. If I were you and you or me, there's two ways that you can do this. The, this particular scarf that you see here is actually sewn to the back collar of this unit before applying the border to it. So that's an option. So this is always gonna be part of it. You could also do the scarf as a separate unit and that this scarf is actually folded in half. See how thick it is? It's actually really, really quite thick. It's also the same stitch work. So I don't need to teach you how to do the stitch work because you've already just been an expert at it already doing everything you need to do. So what I'm going to do is that I'm not gonna show you how to do the scarf and then attach it to the back because all it is is that you lay it halfway to the halfway point and then just sew it to the back collar and therefore you have that. So that's an option for you. What I'm going to do now in the tutorial is that I'm gonna move to the outside bordering. So when you did the outside bordering borders or the outside edges you carried up your yarns just like you see. So now our goal is is to hide that in by just doing some border work. So let's begin to do that next and let's start. So let's start our border. You're going to notice at the top of the center uh, neckline that there's a button. It just actually goes in between the stitches. So you gotta make sure the button can actually slide through and it's just right below the neck. Now if you're doing the outside border and you are doing the scarf and you're attaching it you do not uh, do the border work in the actual neck itself but because I'm not gonna do that and I'm just gonna go right through it I'm going to uh, do the neck. So all you're just going to do is just attach your yarn to a bottom section and we're gonna go in a complete circle of this whole thing as we go around. So all you're just going to do in corners when you go to start is that there will be three single crochets in corners. So when it turns those 90 degree angles. So it'll turn over in the neck area and etc. So you just chain up one and just put in, this is a corner, so put in three single crochets. And all you're just going to do is work evenly up the sides. And so where yarn has been carried, like you see, you wanna make sure that is buried evenly underneath the stitch work. So there's no counts to worry about. You just gotta make sure that it looks even. If it's starting to buckle, meaning that it's starting to uh, ruffle up on you, then it means that um, you're being too quick about uh, jumping over. And if it's starting to really um, um, ruffle out, it means that you're adding too many stitches. So you just have to evenly do it. Um, for myself, I've been crocheting over 30 years, so I've kinda got the idea but I'm making sure that I'm going over, over top of these loose ends. 
that were carried up on the side. So it's a way of hiding them. So instead of cutting all that yarn because you would have had a gazillion ends to weave in, it's a great way to do it. So please circle all the way around your uh, your um, wrap here if you were not doing the collar area for the scarfing and if you're doing the um, scarf then what's gonna happen is that you're gonna skip that area and you can read those instructions then on the pattern itself. So that's what you're going to do and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming all the way back around and I've done the whole thing. I did my three single crochets on corners that were the 90 degree angles. So now we have one more row to go. Now it's slightly different if you are attaching the scarf. Just refer to the instructions for that. So for the remaining of it and even with the scarf you still have to do the reverse single crochet. So we're just going to attach to the first one. Just for fun I am not I have to do a reverse single crochet so I have to go back in the direction I just came but I don't wanna have a certain area of it where the reverse stitch looks the same color. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just trim my yarn now here and I'm going to attach my other yarn ball that has different colors so that I don't repeat the same color going all the way around. Might as well have some fun with some color, right? So I'm just weaving in some ends and let me just grab my next color and show you how to reverse single crochet. So I'm gonna attach my new color. It's the pinkish. And I'm just gonna go into a corner. So in corners you don't need to apply any extra stitches. You just gotta reverse single crochet. So I've attached and just pull it through as a slip stitch. So chain one and single crochet in the same one. But instead of advancing forward in this direction you're going in the reverse. So go into the stitch right before it and then yarning over pulling it through and then you have two loops, pull through two. So that's a reverse single crochet, so the one before it and keep doing that all the way around. So just every stitch gets a reverse single crochet. Now that you've gone all the way around and established all your single crochets into the side of the work where there was no stitch before, it gets a lot easier to be able to follow and get this done. So when I come back I'll have this done. I'll show you how just to weave off your ends and then you can enjoy your new wrap. So I'm just coming back around and I've done my reverse single crochet right into the last stitch. Now what I want you to do is leave an extra long yarn tail and let's trim that yarn and I want you to pull it through that loop. Now if you do it in a right way with the tapestry needle you can make it look like it belongs. I know the color is not the same. That doesn't matter. People don't care about that thing. So what we have today is that we are going to use a tapestry needle. So just feed it onto your needle and uh, I know some of you don't like sewing. So uh, that's an okay thing. I don't mind it because it means I'm done. So what I want to do is that I wanna drag this yarn strand through the beginning one that I started and just go right in there. Now if you pull it ever so nicely, you can make it look like it belongs there because this yarn changes color on its own, right? It will just look like it's just changed color. So just pull it in nicely and now just turn it to the back side and just go back and forth. So you just pull it through one time. Go back in the other direction for number two and go in back in the other direction. Third time is a charm. That's all you need to do. Now the starting strand is still hanging out and I've been weaving in my ends at this point. So this is the last strand and all I'm just going to do is just kind of hide that in. You c I used to weave in my ends many years ago and then I realized that my ends were all popping out all the time. So this is a great way just to just give it that final kick. Especially if you're kind of like always in a rush. You know you're at the Starbucks grabbing coffee and you got your wrap on. You don't want people in the back of the line to be judging you for all your yarn tails hanging out. So this is it for now. This is the, the wrap. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm gonna put it onto the mannequin now and uh, please enjoy and I hope that you've enjoyed this whole tutorial. It's one of the largest ones I've done in a long time and this is a really neat concept and I hope that you have a good one. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Until next time, bye bye.